name is Kathy Zant, and I'm a hacker. Woo -hoo. Woo. <laughs> um, the media tries to portray hackers as really scary people, but you know, I'm a middle-aged mom, and maybe not quite so scary. Uh, we can all be hackers. And today, I'm here to teach you about the hacking mindset and how beating WordPress hackers taught me a lot more than just security. But we'll have some security advice in this talk too. So who am I? Um, I was a web developer before WordPress. Um, one of the first jobs that I had, uh, the internet was coming along and I was in marketing and the, I was the only marketing person who understood what a database was. So I got very involved in web development and learned how to code. Um, as soon as WordPress came along, I was doing blogging and using a different system and WordPress came along and used the same database class or database connection methodology that I was using, and I said, wow, this is a lot easier than generating all of these static files. Let's use a database. In the past three years, I've been working for a company called WordFence. I started with them because they put out a call for people who could clean hack sites, and I said, I know about this, and applied and just said I would like to work only about 20 hours, and here I am working way more than that. <laughs> um, but I've learned a lot from working at WordFence and have enjoyed it. How did I get here? I mean, I went to school and got a degree in speech communication. How the heck did I become a hacker? <laughs> well, that first job that I inherited uh, a server uh, that somebody else had set up, and it had the corporate website on it. And it was a, cor a company that was a multinational corporation, and I and just assumed that whoever set that server up had done so correctly. And I went to go check something on the server, or some log file or whatever, and found a text file in the root of the web directory that said, you've been hacked. And after that, um, after running around with my hair on fire for about five minutes and then notifying everybody in the network security department what had happened, um, got into security. They sent me to security school and I learned all kinds of fun things like how to spoof emails and play practical jokes on friends and family and uh, dove deeply into security. In about 10 years ago, um, I moved most of my sites that I was managing over to WordPress and my husband, Mark, uh, his site was hacked and it was hacked by a vulnerability in a package called Tim Thumb. Tim Thumb is an image uh, compression type of utility that is often included in a lot of themes and plugins. Coincidentally, on the other side of the continent, another Mark uh, had his site hacked. Uh, this was Mark Maunder, our CEO at WordFence. He uh, actually contributed to the Thim, Tim Thumb project and helped them fix that vulnerability. So if you actually open up a Tim Thumb file, it's still in use today. Uh, but you'll see the, the uh, secure version actually has Mark Maunder's name at the top of it. So he got busy securing things, and he also got busy developing WordFence. And WordFence is now on 3 million WordPress websites worldwide. And I work for them, so it was kind of an interesting <laughs> Into an interesting coincidence. So security tip number one, if you inherit anything, whether it be a server, a website, um, a computer, don't assume that the person who was developing that project or had that computer beforehand knew what they were doing. Assume from the get-go that it's insecure and do a quick audit of that to make sure you don't go through the same trauma of running around with your hair on fire like I did many years ago. Never assume anyone else knows more about security than you do. So cleaning hack sites, much like Forrest Gump and the box of chocolates, I never knew what I was going to get. Each hack site was very different. Uh, the vulnerabilities were different, although you know, you'd see some commonalities. If you cleaned a site last week with a newspaper theme that, that was very old that had a vulnerability, you were pretty much sure that the hack was going to look somewhat the same because hackers have bots and they just kind of send them out there to look for similar vulnerabilities and hack them in very much the same ways. But there's so many different vulnerabilities, each site looked very different. This changed my mindset in a lot of ways. I mean, before I started cleaning the hack sites, I was uh, just doing web development and was just kind of, kind of got into a rut in terms of rote thinking. But this challenge, this uncomfortable feeling of a new thing, an unpredictable thing, showing up in my life every single day, multiple times a day sometimes, 
changed my thinking because there was always a new vulnerability. There was always something new to learn. There was always something I had to respond to that was unlike anything I'd ever done before. So I think I kind of found home in the fact that my brain is being challenged every day to think just a little bit differently in order to deal with these types of challenges. There was a guy a very long time ago named Viktor Frankl who had different challenges in his life. Viktor Frankl was in the concentration camps. Uh, he wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning. And in it, there's a quote that is one of my favorite of all time. He says that between stimulus and response, there's a space. And in that space, you have the power. You have the power to choose your response. How are you going to respond to any challenge in your life? And you know, life is not free of challenges. Just being alive means that things are going to show up in your reality that are going to push you and pull you in directions you never thought you were going to go. You know, friends go away, loved ones die, your pet dies, um, we lose jobs. Think about all the challenges that you go through in life and how are you responding to them? Are you responding to them in patterns that you've inherited from childhood? Or is there a better way? Can you respond to new challenges with the hacker mindset by putting a buffer zone in that space between stimulus of a challenge in your life and your response to that stimulus? So I would argue that we need to welcome challenges. How we respond to challenges are going to tell you more about your life than the challenge itself. You know, your, your dog dies. Are you going to, you know, spend months crying? Okay, I've done that. Um, but are you going to respond to the challenges in your life and say, okay, where's the opportunity in this? Where can I grow? Where can I learn something new? Can you think like a hacker when you respond, respond not only to security challenges on your website, but also in your life? Your greatest achievement in life isn't going to come in a vacuum. It's going to come in that space where you decide how you're going to respond. And you have plenty of opportunity in WordPress because it's the largest CMS. And guess what? Hackers understand economies of scale. Hackers are after WordPress, and you're under attack probably right this instant as you're sitting in this room. There's probably a hacker's bot that's looking for a vulnerability in a site that perhaps you take care of. This graph is from the WordFence dashboard from like a week or so ago. When I first started working for them, the amount of hacks coming at WordPress were about one to two million um, in the time in that time frame of 24 hours. Now it's much more than that. And as WordPress grows, the hacks coming at it are going to grow. So you have plenty of opportunity. <laughs> And it's a good thing for you to start thinking about security. This study came from AT&T, and they took a look at the correlation between, obviously they're selling security services, right? But they took a look at the correlation between security mindset and proactive security policies and sales and business growth. And they found that companies with proactive security policies had average 24% sales growth over three years with 20% profit margins. And those companies that didn't have proactive sales policy or proactive security policies did not. So security and thinking proactively about security and choosing how to think like a hacker and everything in your life spills out. So security tip number two. Go on wordfence.com, look for the site security audit. There is a free sample report. This is a product I developed for WordFence. And in that safe sample report, I go through everything, all those 60 um, parameters of security we look at on a WordPress site. And I tell you in the back of the report what we're actually looking for there. So we're looking at you know, how is FTP set up? Are you using SFTP, which is secure FTP, or are you just using plain text FTP? So you can take that report and you can do a security audit yourself and get proactive about your own security and you can do that tonight. That's all free. Even if you're not working with WordPress, you have opportunities to think about security because we're all being hacked. This um, screen grab is from Have I Been Pwned? And pwned is just a funny way of saying owned that hackers like to be, you know, corny. 
Um, I just got a notification. You can sign up for notifications that if your email address is in a breach, they'll email you. I just got one yesterday that I am in a breach, and I'm like, I don't even remember signing up for this site. How <laughs> many in this breach? But we're all in there, and we're all in there multiple times. Um, if you've used Adobe over the past 10 years, you are probably in a breach. Uh, there are so many different collections. Now, what ends up happening is you sign up for a site, you sign up with a username and password. The owner of that site does not take care of it, uh, and there's a vulnerability. A hacker gets in there, downloads all of this personally identifiable information. It ends up in places like the torrents and dark web and all these you know, supposedly scary places on the web. Hackers take that information and then try those passwords and email addresses on other sites. So security tip number three is to go look for your email address on Have I Been Pwned, it's free. And please do not use passwords across multiple services. Does anybody in this room ever reuse their password on multiple sites? I did not think this was a thing. It is a thing. It is a thing. It is very much a thing. Somebody took over my Netflix account. Oh, no. <laughs> and it's, it's happened. It's happening to all of it. But, you know, like 10, 20 years ago, I mean, we used, we used passwords everywhere because it, it wasn't as prevalent. It's, it's now a thing where, where usernames and passwords are kind of broken. That's going to change over the next few years as new security services come forward. But right now, usernames, passwords are broken. And we'll talk more later about how to solve that problem in the interim of while well, the smart people are creating better ways of doing this. But let's talk about who hackers are and what that hacking mindset is. Is this guy the hacker? <laughs> or maybe it's this guy in a hoodie. <laughs> or maybe it's the non-conformist teenage hacker girl. <laughs> security stock photos are just ridiculous. I mean, I'm in the security marketing kind of world now, and we're always looking for ways of explaining security concepts with photo photography or images, and it's just absolutely ridiculous. But it's kind of like what people talk, you know, my daughter, I took my kids, okay, I'm not a normal mother, I took my kids to DuckCon last year, and my daughter went to the kids' hacking village and learned how to pick locks and all kinds of other things. So she's got a hacker t-shirt. She wears it to school, and kids either tell her, can you hack into my brother's Xbox, or you're scary. <laughs> so hacking is like kind of this weird um, idea in the media right now where hackers are this big, scary thing. But what is a hacker really? Anybody know who these guys are? Jobs. Steve Jobs Wozniak. and Wozniak. Steve Wozniak or Woz. Actual hackers. <laughs> Steve Wozniak, the first guy who said, hey, let's take this typewriter keyboard and put it next to a TV and make this thing called a personal computer. Hackers. Smart guys. They actually hacked before there were computers. Before there were computers, there was something known as phone freaking. And when they had analog phone systems, which we you know have gotten rid of now, but you could make a tone into the phone and actually get free long distance, which was a big deal in the late 70s and early 80s before computers. Free long distance, oh my gosh, that's wonderful because it was expensive to make long distance phone calls. The funny thing is, and I found a website that explained that this Captain Crunch whistle in the bottom of a cereal box actually made a perfect 2600 hertz tone, and you could use this to hack a phone system. Hackers are really grown up children <laughs> We just like to play. And we play with things in ways that are different than normal people. Hackers don't see different things. Hackers see the same things, but they see them differently. They see that typewriter, they see that monitor, and they put them together. Things that, you know, back in the 70s, nobody would have thought about that. So, thinking differently. Normal people see a locked door. Hackers see a door with a lock to be picked. Normal people see the way things have always been done. Hackers see a new way of doing it better. Rules or regulations, or things to bend and break. <coughs> Vulnerabilities versus opportunities. <coughs> Does everybody remember the Matrix? Neo, what was his, at the start of the Matrix, what did they do? He was a hacker. He was a computer hacker. 
and it translated very well into thinking about the entire matrix of reality and thinking about that to be hacked. And that's what I would like to encourage you to do, is to look at every opportunity and every challenge in your life as a matrix with rules to bend and break, or there is no spoon. <laughs> Innovation will come. Innovation will come from seeing those challenges in your life that are pushing and pulling you and making your life somewhat painful at times and seeing that challenge in your life a lot differently. So let's talk about what hackers are doing. Does anybody remember this breach? It was really, really in the news in 2013. And Topher, Topher, you remember that one, right? Um, okay, yeah, the target lady probably didn't like it. But okay, so target got breached. They got breached because a vendor, a heating and air conditioning vendor, had credentials for the VPN at Target on his laptop. Okay, so I'm a hacker, I'm getting into a computer, and I find these credentials, I figure out that it's Target. Do I think, oh, I'm just gonna, well, this is the HVAC system at Target, I'm going to get in there, or do I look deeper? Do I have patience to stay in Target's network for 19 days undiscovered to poke around and find something bigger like the cash registers at 1,800 Target stores across the country? They were in there for 19 days. That's a long time in the security world. But they poked around and they were patient until they found something extremely valuable. Now this happened with another um, incident response that I was involved in, and it was a very large breach. It involved uh, a company that was in the news, and it was a WordPress breach. And what happened was somebody was using passwords on multiple sites. And this was a huge installation, a multi-site installation. And this person had their username and password. And the, the, the email address that he was using was, um, you know, customername.com. So hackers like, hmm, I wonder if there's WordPress. Hmm, I wonder if this password will work on their WordPress installation. And he got into that WordPress multi-site, got in deeper, found that that server had not been patched and was able to pivot away from that server on their network and get into customer data. It was a huge breach. It was a big problem. But that hacker remained patient. So. Security tips from that, don't be like that company. Functionally isolate your WordPress websites. And I, I see this all the time, and we see this all the time in our cleaning business. One cPanel should have one WordPress website in it. We see 30 of them. That one site gets hacked um, because of a password reuse or some other problem, and then it expands into a 30 site multiple redirect into a bad place of an internet for everybody visiting one of those 30 sites. One cPanel, one site. Don't put multiple sites in one location. You want to make it difficult for hackers to pivot. Remove anything you're not using. This is also functional isolation. If you are not using a plugin, delete it. If you are not using a theme, delete it. If you are not using another site that was installed into that space, delete it. Even your test sites. Oh, well, I'm just going to make a quick copy and test this before I put it on production. Uh, if you're not using that test site, delete it. Or if you have to have that staging site, take care of it. Because we see a lot of intrusions happen with stuff that just gets forgotten and isn't taken care of. Another hacker mindset, obviously, is persistence. Um, if I was that hacker trying to get into something really juicy on Target's network, um, I would keep going and keep going and keep going. Um, don't give up just because you think you see where you're at. Don't be the guy on the bottom. Patience and persistence. I teach people to pick locks oftentimes at word camps, um, and I see people sometimes who don't even try. I see people who try once and then give up. If you're having a problem in your life, walk away for a while and come back with it with fresh eyes. Often that new perspective is just waiting for, it, for you to slow down a little bit and walk away. So treat problems and your site security and your computer security and your house security 
like puzzles and gamify solutions. Look for opportunities and the challenges that are showing up in your life. When you watch your site security, you'll see the challenges coming at WordPress in a different way. And I'm just going to sneak this in there, back up everything. And also don't trust your backups all the time. If you get hacked uh, and you think, oh, well, I've got a backup. Uh, if you haven't been paying attention to your site security, maybe you were hacked before that last known backup. Uh, make lots of backups. Another way you can adopt the hacker mindset is to scale your uh, technology. Now, a lot of people think, OK, there's a hacker trying to get into my site, and they think it's that guy in the hoodie. <laughs> and maybe the guy's wearing a hoodie, and maybe not. Um, but it's, he's not attacking your site. But he's written a bot that's attacking your site. Maybe he's written 10 bots that are attacking multiple sites. It's not a dude. It's just somebody looking for those vulnerabilities or opportunities to, to the hacker. You can leverage that same mindset in your own life by leveraging technology to make your security more effective. Firewalls are your way of getting a bot standing in front of your server or in front of your website to defeat the hacker's bots. Intrusion detection and malware scanning are other technologies that you can leverage. Um, you can use tools to look at your log files. Who here looks at their log files? Oh my gosh, look at all those hands. I did not expect that. That's so awesome. There, there's tools out there that you can use to, to look at your log files. If you're not looking at your log files, you should do that periodically to see the types of attacks that are coming at you. Because if you're not looking, if you're not constantly aware of what's coming at you, you can't defend against things. Um, and use password managers. We've talked about you know the problems with me using passwords. I have 20 characters in each password, and I am not going to remember any of them <laughs> at all. So use a password manager. Uh, Security is going to change. Passwords are going to kind of, well, the way authentication is going to happen is going to change. There's a new standard that was just adopted earlier this year called WebAuthn, and this is going to have authentication happen on your device or on your computer. And that's going to make it things more secure because passwords aren't going over the wire. Um, and, and, but it's not here yet. So right now, just use a password manager. One password, LastPass, KeyPass. There's a number of them available. And always look be below the surface. Um, you know, like go back to that, that target breach. They, did, they didn't stop with the HVAC system. They went much deeper. You have to be curious to find solutions. Um, and as long as that problem in your life or that challenge exists in your life, it's kind of like life is pulling you towards a bigger and better solution you just can't see yet. Ask questions. How does this work? What's really going on? What if I try this? Experiment with your life. Experiment with your security. And a security talk would be remiss if I didn't talk about ethics. What makes a hacker, a white hat hacker, different than a black hat hacker. I mean, they're all kind of looking to exploit opportunities or exploit vulnerabilities, right? You're trying to exploit something. Um, but the intent behind that is very different. Some people put ethics over money. And I would encourage you to always put ethics and doing the right thing over money, because money isn't the solution to everything. Um, but, but put making the world a better place and making your life a better place as your intent behind anything and everything you do. Um, and don't do no harm <laughs> would be another thing. You want to make sure that you're an ethical hacker and not an unethical hacker. And white hat hacking, it pays. Has anybody heard about the recent vulnerability with Instagram? Yeah, so uh, white hat hacker. Uh, tested Instagram's security. Their two-factor authentication is a six-digit code that if you forget your password, you request this six-digit code so that you can try to get back into your Instagram account. Well, this white hat hacker leveraged cloud services like AWS or Google Cloud or something like that where he could rotate through IP addresses and bypass their security. So a six-digit code means there's like a million possible permeations and he threw a million <laughs> permeations of those numbers at Instagram and was able to get into any site or any Instagram account. Um, so he disclosed that responsibly to Instagram. 
And guess what? They gave me $30,000 for disclosing that responsibility. <clears throat> that is why hackers are good, and that's why you should not fear hackers. Hackers are trying to make things better. Ethical hackers, and, and it's great that Instagram and companies like this are funding that kind of white hat hacking because it's going to make all of us and our, all of our digital security much safer. No matter what, I mean, your house. Your house has security vulnerabilities, right? You've got a lock on your front door. I could pick it. You have windows. Somebody can throw a rock through them. There's always going to be, if a hacker wants to get in, they will be persistent. They will be patient. They will get in somehow. So your job is to just make things difficult and support people like white hat hackers who are going to try to make your life a lot easier. So security tip number six, use two-factor authentication everywhere right now. It's just, it's a rough world out there right now. Um, with passwords and, I mean, the, the number of breaches that haven't been pwned has alerted us to just in this last week. Like, what the heck is going on? And the cool thing that they're doing is they're now telling us, okay, this, per, you know, 69% of the people in this breach are already in have I been pwned. And that number just keeps going higher and higher. So two-factor authentication. It is available for, Word, for WordPress. Uh, WordFence has two solutions that you can use. Um, if you use WordFence itself, the, the full plugin, there is now free two-factor authentication that you can put on WordPress. There's also a standalone plugin that if you don't want all of the features of WordFence on your site, if you have a firewall that's being addressed by your host, whatever, there's a standalone two-factor authentication plugin that you can use, um, and it's really powerful. Use authenticator-based 2FA, two-factor authentication, for over SMS-based, over getting um, the code via your cell phone, because SMS can be breached, and there have been recent cases, especially in the cryptocurrency world, where two-factor authentication via SMS has proven to be not as secure as it sounds. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that one? The, um, go back to that, please. What's that? What do you mean by authenticator based over? I know what okay. SMS means, but what does authenticator based mean? Exactly? Okay, so there's a couple of apps. There's a, there's a number of apps that you can put on your phone, um, and one password actually has this built into one password. So you can have your username, password, and the authenticator. It's a, it's a time based number um, that you scan a little QR code with your phone or import that into one password. They have directions on their site that make it easy to do. Um, and that way, that code is constantly changing. Um, it's based- Like Authy. Like Authy. Okay. Authy is one of them. Google Authenticator has one. Yeah. LastPass has a standalone app that you can use. And you just get that, that QR code. You scan it. Um, the site will give you, um, whatever you're using it for, will give you some backup codes that you can store safely. You can put them in your password manager and notes. But that two-factor authentication with the time-based code that changes, it'll change like every minute. So, you know, and it'll start turn red and start like flashing at you when you're getting to the end of where it's going to change. But that, that code will help. Um, the SMS just is, can be bypassed and there have been SMS attacks where, uh, I don't know if it's the, the uh, cell phone company's um, issue or if they are being social engineered. Um, I mean, imagine this scenario. You go into a Verizon store, not my Verizon store or anything, but you go in and say, oh my gosh, my name's Kathy Zad, my mom just died, and I, my phone isn't working, and I don't know what's wrong with it. Can you please help me? And you, you put that person under a time-based pressure. They're feeling sorry for you. And you get a new SIM card put into a new phone. And now all of my codes are going to, whoever just pretended to be me, going to that phone. And there have been cases where um, Coinbase was getting, um, the Coinbase, which is a cryptocurrency trading platform, um, those Coinbase accounts were, um, were compromised because the password resets were going there. The email password reset was going there. Um, so you want to use Authenticator, especially where things are really secure, or where you want things to be very secure you want to use a time-based token rather than using SMS because that 
that's been vulnerable. We've seen vulnerabilities um, being exploited in the past. Um, I'll tweet out the mark. We, we talked about it on the podcast. We do a podcast called Think Like a Hacker. We talked about um, two-factor authentication and how these things have happened in the past. So you can listen to that if you'd like to hear the low down and dirty. Um, the, the guy it happened to who lost $100,000 in cryptocurrency um, wrote a very fascinating uh, write-up of what happened to him. Uh, and I can, uh, I'll share that on my Twitter. It's Kathy Zan. Here, just there. <laughs> Kathy's, Kathy's aunt um, and Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn or wherever. Kathy's aunt everywhere. All right, so I threw a lot at you. Are there any questions? Yeah. Are you aware of hosting services that have authentic interface 2FA on the hosting side so I can't just go in and disable your authentic interface 2FA on the WordPress side? <laughs> Good question. Yeah, hosting providers with 2FA. Um, I know GoDaddy has it on the account. They have domains with GoDaddy, and I know they have 2FA on that. That's another thing you want to protect with uh, 2FA is your domains. Um, there are cases, who was it? There was a guy, he had like a single letter Twitter account, and they just like brute forced into his domain, which got them into his email, and they basically took over his like really expensive, high value Twitter account that way. That was quite a few years ago. But so like, I know GoDaddy has that. Um, I'm not aware, I, I don't use like a ton of different hosts, um, so, but definitely something to check. There's also a website, and this, all right, so my bank does not have the time-based token available, and the other day, last week, I get an alert, I'm just sitting there, you know, messing around on Reddit or something, and I get an alert on my phone, here's the code that you asked for from my bank, and I'm just like, Freaking out, obviously, because like that means my username and password have been guessed, right? So you know, call my bank, and it's something with their SMS system. Apparently, um, time for a new bank, right? Um, I work in security. I've seen enough. I've seen too much. Uh, I, I went on a site that looked about looked at two-factor authentication and what services use it. Oh my God, our banking industry is a mess. Does anybody here have a bank that can recommend with time-based two-factor authentication? My most recent corporate job was at the clearinghouse, which is where your financial transactions clear. Yeah. Move your account to, to a credit union. Credit union? See, I, and I asked about that, and another friend told me, oh, my credit union, they send out SMS codes all the time. Like, my, my heart can't take that. <laughs> they made, I, I don't know on the security end, yeah. I just know from working, yeah, yeah. They, they tend to be a little, because they're smaller, right? so they, they can, they, they're less corporate and less caught up in all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, well, I use smaller banks, but it's still, it's, a, it's an issue in the banking industry. The cryptocurrency industry has it all figured <laughs> out because they're under more attack, because when you transfer funds via cryptocurrency, it's permanent. It's That's how I knew about Authy. Yeah. That's the only way I knew about Authy. Yeah. Is that, but. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you recommend using password managers. Of course, I've heard this many times before, but I've always been concerned about that because you're concentrating all your passwords in one place. Yes. I'm sure they're encrypted, Same. but Same. Have, is this a concern for either a laptop or a, a phone device? Um, yeah, single point of failure, right? Yeah. I, I'm very concerned with things like that. I mean, I was, I'm scared to use things like a single dashboard for all of my sites because it's a single point of failure. So I have to understand that the security is incredibly important. Um, LastPass did have a breach, but uh, none of the none of the customer data was affected because of the way it was encrypted. That gave me a little um, it gave me a sense of security there. Uh, LastPass also the way the way LastPass is set up is is highly secure. Um, but again, security is one of those weird things. I mean, when I first started coding sites, SQL injection wasn't a thing. Does anybody know what SQL injection is? Yeah. So SQL injection wasn't a thing. I, I remember the days of having to like go sanitize input. That's how old I am. <laughs> but there's going to be another thing, like some time in the future, that make you know. Everything that we're working to secure today is not going to be secure in the future. So it's always going to be a risk, and you have to make a calculated risk. One of the features I really like about LastPass 
is that they do tie into Troy Hunt's Have I Been Pwned? So if you're using a password that's been in a breach, it will tell you. So I really like that feature about LastPass, that they're tying into that API that Troy Hunt has available. Uh, WordFence also will tell you if your site, your WP admin password has been in a breach and will lock you out. <laughs> so you have to go through the steps of resetting your password so that your site will stay secure. It's a really effective resource. So I'm really, I'm a fan of both LastPass and 1Password. Um, some of the more technical guys that I work with like to keep everything on. They do all kinds of Linuxy crazy things that I'm just not ready for. <laughs> so I, I use both LastPass and 1Pass because I'm that crazy. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, on the server side, if you've got a database you want to protect it, are things like data at rest, we need to touch on that last pass case you're talking about encrypting the database. Are, are they effective or something that can just like they still work out how to decrypt the database? How to decrypt the database? Yeah. Um, yeah, so encryption of database is kind of it's a difficult question, right? Because if you're going to encrypt your database, you have to be able to decrypt it in order to make anything useful, right? Yeah, exactly. It's about so, percent so where is where is your key? To, in, to well, yeah, the key has to be in the server. Yeah. So I'm trying to work out if there's something we're missing because we won't. If someone's going to your server anyway. Right. Yeah. Right. So uh, in that type of scenario where you have highly sensitive information that you have to encrypt. Mm. Um, there's, there's a guy who's very he's very active in word camps. Um, his name's Chris Teitzel, and he has a service called Locker. But it's a L O C K R dot I O. You can learn about his service. Um, what's highly technical? Like if you're really trying to, if you're using WordPress or Drupal or any of those kind of management systems, and you need to really secure sensitive data and look into something like that. I mean, that's obviously a question as we're moving. WordPress into dealing with much more sensitive information. Um, you, you, I would never put highly sensitive HIPAA or PCI related types of information into WordPress. I just wouldn't yeah. do it because WordPress, is, what's, what's it designed to do? Oh, no, totally Serve up information. Totally <laughs> so you can't have encryption keys on that server because it needs to be able to be free. So that kind of data I would treat differently and I wouldn't necessarily put it into a system that is content management related and I would do something very different. But look at Chris's uh, application because I do find that interesting and very technical. And our latest uh, interview on Think Like a Hacker, if you go on Think Like a Hacker, or the podcast, we interview him. Um, so that just went out yesterday, so you can listen to all of that fun encryption goodness. Yeah. So, thank you. I didn't catch Chris's application you referenced. Oh yeah, it's um, locker, L-O-C-K-R dot I-O. Um, yeah, if you go on um, the podcast, you can get a link to it there too. Yeah. So do you see more break, uh, hacking attempts made on uh, like the hosts or coming from WordPress security? I mean, is it kind of a 50-50 split or is there more so sort of done on hosting? where the host server gets hacked versus the WordPress site itself? Um, what we see in our business, and we have seen instances where a WordPress website gets hacked, and then a ha hacker, if the site, if the server is not set up securely, they can pivot into other hosting customers. So it happens more that way than coming in through the host yeah. and going to the site? Yeah, that's, what, that's typically what we'll see. Um, there, we have seen, yeah, I mean, it, all of the host vulnerabilities that we found have been hacked site and the, ho and the hacker has found a way, like that target instance, to pivot into other areas that they shouldn't be able to. Um, and we've worked with a number of hosts to lock that thing down. Um, we do have one host that I, I'm not at liberty to discuss that I just don't. <laughs> um, it, if you're in the UK, there's one host that is just... I've seen a number of issues with. You're laughing, Dan. You probably know what I'm talking about. I don't even need to say anything. Any other questions? Awesome. Thank you guys for